What about the prosperity of having God forever with you, leading you? The shepherd that supplies our need makes me lay down in green pastures, leads me by the still waters, knows how to furnish a table in the wilderness, knows how to keep me in darkness in the valley of death. What about having the presence of God in my life? You know what the Bible says about Joseph in the Old Testament? A, a man that lost his father and lost his younger brother and, and his brethren hated him and was sold him into slavery. What the Bible says at that particular time when all that had taken place, that he was a prosperous man. You say, how? How is that even possible? He doesn't have a cent to his name. He's a slave to the Egyptians. He's lost his dad. He's lost his brother. He has brothers that hate him. How's that possible? We'll go to Genesis 39 and I'll show you. I want you to see what the Bible says. Look at verse 1. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian brought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down hither. And the Lord was with Joseph. And he was a what? Prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. And made all that he did to prosper in his hand. You know, that phrase, the Lord was with him, was a, was a testimony in Joseph's life. Because it got worse. Potiphar's wife accuses him of sexually assaulting her. And he's now thrown and thrust in prison. And you know what the Bible says? Listen, the Lord was with him. <laughs> I want you to see it in verse 21. Look at this. Verse 21. And verse 20. And Joseph's master took him and put him into prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison, but the Lord was with him. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to any that was under his hand because the Lord was with him and that which he did, the Lord made it what? To prosper. What a testimony. You know what the world sings? The world sings it like this. Whatever he, he, whatever he touches turns to gold. Fake and phony. The true prosperity in the life of a person is when the Lord is with you. Listen to me very carefully. You don't have to have a cent on, uh, on your name. You can be in a four by four in prison. You have nothing, but the Lord is with you. You're rich. The opposite is true. You can have everything your heart's desired. You can gain the whole world and not have the Lord, and you're a poor person. You're a poor person. The way the world views prosperity is different the way... God views prosperity. And yes, we understand that Job and Abraham were blessed. And they had things. And prosperity was accounted of God's blessing. But you know, what we fail to understand is that there are more than just tangible blessings. And that's what God was teaching Job. God was teaching Job, I'm going to make you a blessing, Job. I'm going to refine you in the fire. I want you to turn to gold. I want you. You're the product of my handiwork. Not what I give you, but what I make you. That's prosperous. A lot of people boast in what they have, but they're nothing like Christ. And they jump up and down. They say, blessing, blessing. God's blessed me. But their character is nothing like the Lord. They're not godly. They're not sober. They're not righteous. They always base blessing upon numbers and crowds and money. Although that's a factor, but it's not the end all. I'm not saying it's wrong to have money. I'm not saying it's wrong to have... I want to see people saved, there's no doubt. Jesus says, go out and compel them that, that they may come in and my house may be full. Praise God for that. But if that's all we're looking for, 
We're looking for a number and not a soul, then you've failed. Amen? By the way, God looks at every single person as a soul. He calls them by name. He who knows the stars knows you. Zacchaeus, come down. How do you know him? His name. That would have blown me away. Just right there. Someone must have told him. Now he knows you. He's been watching you. Nathaniel, he's been watching you too. He's been watching you all that time. He knows where you are. He's the God man. He sees everything. And then nothing beats than to have the presence of God in your life. And I really mean the presence of God. And to have fellowship with God. And to know him and to be known of him. 